Yes. What's going on, everybody? TJ here, back again with a brand new Rugby Muscle podcast. This is episode 84, all about injuries. The reason that we decided to record this podcast um, specifically was because we decided it was time to make you guys a comprehensive podcast discussing all the different injuries that might occur, why they occur, how you can go about preventing them, how you can go about rehabbing from them, how you can go about training as best you can around those injuries. These are all different topics and um sort of nuanced issues that people that get injured especially rugby players who have to expose themselves to collisions that are equivalent to car crashes these are issues that you guys have to be aware of in order to continue to make progress and continue to keep pushing forward and keep developing the physique that you want to achieve now one of the single best ways that you can make sure that you're doing both of these things is by making sure that you've got the best programming best strength training available to you we hope that we've given you that over at rugby-muscle.com you in our team rugby muscle where we deliver workouts straight to your phone depending on your goal whether you're trying to be the best possible player that you can be or whether you just want to develop a really awesome looking physique whilst managing the demands of being in the middle of, of a rugby season and to find out more information i'm going to plug it all here i'm just going to say go to rugby muscle.com to find more information i really hope that you guys enjoy this episode but not just enjoy it but get a lot of use out of it it's one of those episodes that you might have to go back and re-listen to if you do pick up any injuries or if you do start to look to, to arrange your own programming sort of things that you might want to consider so let's get into that podcast all right guys welcome back we're here with nick again and today we're going to go over um just basically injuries and rugby and how we can prevent them, um, how we can best train around them and how we can continue to get better in spite of the fact that we get injured. So, Nick, how's it going? Yeah, good, mate. Good. I'm glad to be back again. Yeah, it's good to ha- keep having you on. It's good to keep getting these uh, podcasts consistently rolling out now. And I think that they're really, it's like properly important information I think that we're trying to put out. Yeah, definitely. And I think... Uh... As far as I'm concerned, if we keep getting good feedback and people keep listening, then there's no reason we should stop. No, and what I like about doing the the podcast format, um, kind of what I touched on it last time, but I like the fact that we can also get into the areas of grey. We can explain things a bit more, you know, the nuances and explain things at a bit of a deeper level, you know, which it's, it's a lot harder to do you know, on other forms of social media and other things like that, because the, you know, things have to be delivered a lot quicker. Whereas we could sort of, I know, I know these are podcasts are quick, but we can, we can really get into details of different things with this podcast. Yeah, definitely. It's um, also a bit more free flowing and I think it brings a bit more personality to it as well. Yeah. 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 For sure. Maybe that's a good thing. I'm not sure if it's a good thing. So it's because I, I often get haters, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but I guess, I guess whilst we're we're talking about um, personality, oh bollocks, the uh, the music's not uploading. Oh well, um, it is time for you to give your fact of the week. Do I need to wait for the music? Um, I mean, you can do because I'm about to pull it up. So ah, wow. it is. Oh. That was a fail, but oh well. <laughs> uh, right, so my fact of the week this week is in Switzerland, it's actually illegal to own just one guinea pig. What? Yeah, it's illegal to own one guinea pig. Apparently, guinea pigs are social animals, and they get too lonely if you own just one. So it's been outlawed. This is what the Swiss prioritize in well, their rule- they're rulemaking? In their they don't have to worry about all the other garbage that comes with that. <laughs> That's what I mean. They're like, nah, <laughs> listen, we, we need to cut to the important stuff. We don't want to, you know, we want a really tiny military. We don't have to worry about the, most of the things that most countries are worried about. We have to worry about fucking guinea pigs, all right? That's brilliant. It, yeah, it was one of my favorite ones I saw last week. Yeah, it's a good, it's a, it's a really good fact. Um, all right, cool. Uh, what I liked about that fact most is that, there, you know, there's a lot of questions, but there's nothing that can be answered. So we didn't have to fuck around with it too much. <laughs> um <laughs> So let's get straight into the meat of this podcast now. Um, 
we got the question a while. I, I got a question a while back. Um, just basically saying, how can you maintain mu- muscle mass whilst recovering from an injury? And as I got into answering it, and this was on Instagram, as I went into answering it, it made me realize, um, you know, how many different factors there are in terms of dealing with injuries, especially for rugby players. Um, and how that's it's never really spoken about. Like we, you know, there's a lot of talk about different mobility drills or different recovery things, or um, you know, all of those things. But but there's not really a a, um, a proper nuanced, a detailed description of why are we getting these injuries, how can we stop them, and what can we do when we're injured? Because a lot of the information you'll ever get is from your head coach or your rugby team who says, stop being a pussy, you're not injured, go as hard as you can, don't ever, you know, play every week. And then you've got your 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 doctor who's shit scared of getting sued, who's saying, don't do anything, just, just sit on a foam chair for three weeks and do nothing. And then maybe you won't be injured. Yeah. It, there's a lot of conflicting information out there and obviously different people are approaching it from a different angle and they're going to advise you on different things to get the outcome that they want. Yeah, yeah. Whereas what's what's our outcome? What do we want? What's our influence? What's our end game here? Um, to try and avoid the injury in the first place and if you do get injury, recover from it as quickly and properly as you can. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Good stuff. All right, so let's go. Let's do two minutes on like why injuries occur? Um, right, so I would say there's two different types of injuries. Um, there are the ones that are unpreventable, so they're usually freak ones like bone breaks, blood, concussion, um, things that usually you don't have any control over, and usually in rugby they involve another person. Um, it's it's kind of not very often that these unavoidable injuries will happen on your own. Um, and then we have the avoidable injuries, which are ones that usually happen without the aid of contact. Um, things like if you step and blow your ACL or something like that is, it, it seems unavoidable, but actually if you dig down deep enough, it's actually quite avoidable um, and something that you could have avoided if you had prepared in, properly in the first place. Yeah, good. So contact injuries and non-contact injuries are the two main categories of injury that we get. Um, and then I'd go even further down the line and say, uh, you know, overuse and gym injuries are the three different types that we get. So the first one, contact injuries, like that's, you know, like you said, it's they're the freak ones. They usually involve someone else or they can involve another object or something being awkward and, and your body ends up in a position that you didn't mean it to be in. And there wasn't anything that you could have really done to prevent that. And therefore yep. something gives out and and you, you hurt yourself. Um, non-contact, like you said, um, a lot of people think like ACL injuries and, and, and are, oh, you know, these things are just unfortunate or if someone keeps blowing out a hamstring or something, these injuries are actually like completely avoidable. Now, that doesn't mean it's easy to avoid them. It doesn't mean they're definitely not going to happen. I mean, if you do all of the gym work, they're definitely not going to happen, but they are 100% preventable and you should, 100% do the things that stop you from getting these injuries. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've Like for myself, anecdotally, um, I've, and I've got a whole seven team that can back it up. I got hit in the side of the knee in a tackle um, well, maybe two years ago now. And on the video, you can see my knee cave inwards. Like it looked like at least a season ending injury. Um, and I went down like a sack of shit. I thought I was done. And then all of a sudden I got up and I was like, oh, wait a second. It's oh, not too right. bad. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, apparently the amount of squatting and the amount of um, heavy weights I do in my legs has pretty much made my tendons and um, ligaments in my knees really, really robust. So I just took the hit. I got up and I walked away and I played the next game. Nice. So you've even there avoided like a contact injury from it as well. Not yeah, even... like so, some of those contact injuries um, – uh, I wouldn't say they're preventable, but they can. The impact can be minimised. Oh yeah, yeah. Ex- well, or the yeah, the impact of the impact. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. The the the, the uh, what the consequences of getting hit? You know, if yeah. if someone 
you know, if 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 I threw my mum into a game of rugby and and you know she took a crash ball off a ten, like she'd get injured because she's yeah. not because the impact of that impact is greater to her. She's gonna feel a lot more um, abuse through that. And exactly, she's not conditioned to it. Yeah. So therefore, we can sort of condition ourselves to be better at dealing with contact injuries, but we can't necessarily prevent all of them. Uh, Non-contact injuries, and for sure, we can prevent. Like they come from. You know, a lack of most of the time, non-contact injuries come from lack of establishing a good base. Um, whether that's you know pushing versus pulling, um, which which is where a lot of them come from, uh, it can, or you know a lack of ability to of proprioception, like your landing ability, a lot of your cutting ability, that sort of stuff. That's why um, I mean, team rugby muscle, we do it all the time. We do a lot of um, I say we do it all the time. We do it. We're starting doing it because the program's just come out. But we set a good base of plyometrics um, uh, volume first so that people yeah. know how to land. They know how to take off. They, their ligaments and tendons get used to that. And then they go into like more plyometric stuff, more power work. But if you, if you just go straight from nothing, you don't have a good strength base, you, you are asking to hurt yourself because you're ex- – because the forces that you're putting through your your body are extreme when you're doing plyometrics, when you're doing power, when you're doing that sort of thing. And on a rugby pitch, it's going to be even more extreme because you're trying to beat your opponent. Yeah. Um, if you don't have a certain level of general physical preparedness, then you're more likely to get injured. And we said in there that you're conditioning yourself um, to you know, minimize the impact of the impact of these injuries. Um <laughs> But it's that's essentially that's one of the key words is strength and conditioning is for us on the rugby field is not just about getting bigger and stronger. It's also about making us more robust and more resilient to injury. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so if we can stop getting injuries, then that's like it sounds cheesy and like a rip off to rip off of an answer but that's the best way to you know maintain muscle mass recover from injuries be the best like is to not get injured a lot of the best especially if you look at strength sports as well but bodybuilding as well like those sort of things like a lot of the guys that are awesome are like in their 40s or even 50s and they just haven't got hurt so they've been able to continue to gain strength gain muscle um you know throughout and they haven't had the years off where they've had to manage injuries or because you're not because you know you don't just rehab from an injury and then you're you're better like that sometimes that injury can keep coming back and keep coming back and you have to manage it therefore you can't put the volume through to build the strength build the muscle do all that good stuff yeah exactly um and people always well not always but a lot of people come back from injury and assume that they're better before they are and then become re-injured. And it might not even be the same thing that was re-injured, but you've, like a lot of people, when they get a, a long-term injury, they stop everything. And when they stop everything, they then come back and try and start everything at the intensity they were before and uh, usually get injured, maybe not in the same area, but yeah, in a different area because they're lacking that general physical preparedness now. Yeah, so on that note, do you want to just go into, so we've spoken about how injuries occur. Um, I will quick, actually quickly, overuse injuries, you know, they're, they're not only preventable, overuse injuries are negligence. They come from, you know, if you're doing, if you if you tear your pec whilst benching, you've been doing too many bench presses. Like there's something going wrong there. If you hurt your, you know, your lower back doing squats more often than not, it's because you've done too many squats or you're not in the right position. Those sorts of things. Those are preventable injuries. Um, yeah, definitely. And so we're not going to touch on those in there but here. Just just don't do stupid programming, and you'll be fine. Easy. And and also, those injuries can also happen when you're like at the top point one percent of your body's like output so you're trying to you know eke out every little kilo increase of strength that you can then every now and again yeah you, you're going to be susceptible to an overuse injury that way but more often than not don't don't worry about those worry about trying to prevent non-contact injuries and program better Perfect. so all right so how do we how do we rehab from the injury mate uh the first thing you need to do is rest um which is the last thing most people want to do but it's the definite first step. Like if there's any inflammation or 
anything like that, that needs to go down. So even for minor injuries like small sprains, stuff like that, something that might not even keep you out for the week, you still have to rest. You still have to try and minimize the inflammation so you can actually assess the injury uh, in the, you know, without the excess fluid and the excess heat and all the other crap that comes with inflammation. Yeah. Um, it like it also a good thing about rest is if you're injured, your body needs a lot more nutrients. Like we're looking at calories here to, um, the body needs a lot more calories, a lot more energy, a lot more nutrients to repair that injury. Right? So if you're also carrying on being a crazy person and, and doing as much as you can, um, as soon as you got that injury, then you're going to pull some resources that would have been used to, uh, to repair your injury. Yeah. Um, if you are in a calorie deficit and then you get injured, it's always advisable to go back to maintenance at, yep, least. at least, maybe even a small surplus, um, and really concentrate on getting enough, um, proteins and carbohydrates in there and maybe even up your fats a little bit. Yeah. So from a nutrition standpoint, you have to make sure you're getting in enough like and 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 that yeah. is that applies for every single injury across the board because you need that those that nutrition to repair your your injury but at the same from the same counterpoint i guess or to counter that point if you if you get injured you're also not going to like like we just said you're going to rest right so you're not going to be doing the same level of activity so what maintenance calories was is going to change so it's going to be a moving target so you might think oh i need to eat a lot more but actually you don't have to eat a lot more you can probably just eat the same but because you're resting that ends up being a lot more yeah exactly it'll just get used differently by the body beautiful um but yeah for sure get in that rest um you know, try and the biggest thing I actually I think that a lot of people miss is um, actually diagnosing that injury, getting a physical yeah. therapist, getting a doctor to figure out what the fuck is going on, so then you know what you need to improve, and then you can work on rehabbing what you need to rehab, like certain muscles, certain movements, whatever you need to do to get better. But um, you know, that puts you in a good place to at least understand what you've got to do rather than just doing nothing. And then, you know, you, you think you've got, you've got better after two months and then you go and do the same shit that got you injured in the first place. Yeah. Um, rehab is super important and it's the thing that people tend to glaze over all the time. Yeah, cool. And then what about this um, period where you were talking about how we end up getting deconditioned? How can we prevent that? Well... Um, so alongside your rehab, so rehab should be something you're doing almost from the get-go. Like even when you have broken bones and stuff, there's still small rehab things you can do. So yeah, alongside I had that, though, rehab on the, the the day I had knee surgery. That day yeah. I did just started off my rehab. All it was was exactly. you know ten seconds of tensing up my quad, but yeah, all adds up. Exactly, and it, it could even be stuff that's not voluntary. It might be EMS or something like that. Yeah, uh, sorry, EMT. Um, and then. So using whatever the rehab is that you've been given, and it could be something as little as icing or something like that, um, alongside that, you should continue training things that you can still train without affecting the injury. Yes. Um, so, for example, if you injure your shoulder, you can probably still do a number of lower body movements and maybe even training on the other side. There has been some research that has shown uh, oh, I can't remember what the word is for it, but there's a fancy word that basically means if you train one side of your body, um, you have the ability to maintain more muscle mass and strength on the injured side. And the same thing actually happens for flexibility. Um, people have shown in studies that if you roll one hamstring, uh, your other hamstring tends to also get looser because your body's trying to avoid injury by becoming too dominant on one side. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um yeah, that, I mean that's been shown quite a few times, and that's if you've got one, you know. So if you've got one shoulder's atrophying, atrophy, atrophying, it's going, uh, it's going, like that. yeah, it's going to atrophy. <laughs> yeah, it's going to atrophy. Then you can work the other shoulder and actually avoid that, you know. And that, and that in itself, 
saves you a lot of time because now rather than once your shoulder is healed, do you have to gain like, you know, an extra pound of muscle on that shoulder you actually already have kept that muscle and you can work on rehabbing it better like it, or it puts you ahead of your your timeline that's why i always you know same reason that we always say the best time to start you know a new plan or, or whatever or, or working towards your goal is now because then when you were gonna you originally you were gonna start it in three weeks well now when you're originally gonna start it you've got three weeks of a head start um already so you're in a better position from the start and that's why like it's always good to go and and continue to weight train into a surgery as well if you're ever having a surgery you're just going to be better off once you once you come out the other side because of all that work that you've done before exactly and from a nutrition standpoint if like if i was if i got an injury that meant i couldn't use a muscle group so say for example i injured my knee and i couldn't extend my my leg anymore I would be smashing the protein in because there's so much evidence out there that shows if you can maintain high enough protein intake, then you're far less likely to lose muscle and to atrophy because instead yeah. of taking from the muscle that's not being used, you just take from the dietary protein. And how how high how high would you would you bump that protein up to? Uh, I've seen studies where they bump up to about 3.2 grams per Ooh. kilo. Um, I've seen three. And, yeah, so three is probably the highest I would recommend to somebody in that position. Yeah, three is like the highest seen, necessary. Yeah, but 3.2 is what I've seen in a study. Nice. I in a couple of studies, actually. Um, but generally for people who are weight training and you know looking for muscle gain or muscle repair or even um, to try and stop muscle loss, I always recommend between two and three because that's where most of the literature for those exact examples lies. Yeah, and, and quick side note, um, this doesn't apply if you aren't injured, you can't just eat more protein, like that uh, doesn't work like that. It's well, just... if, if, if you're not injured and for whatever reason you're not training for whatever... Uh, oh, you know, yeah, if you're not training, holiday, yeah, whatever, sure. You can still do the same thing. Yeah, but if you, I'm, I'm saying that if, you, if, you're, if you're not injured, you can't just add more protein in and expect to just to gain more muscle. There's a, there's a caveat. No, there. no, no. Um, like muscle won't gain just by eating more protein. You still have to provide the correct stimulus. But it might preserve um, by eating more protein, which is which is your point. Exactly. That's yeah. the differentiation. It, all I'm saying is that it will stop you losing as much muscle than if you didn't. Yeah, cool. Um, so to touch on that, like I think people underestimate the amount of work that they can do whilst being injured for sure. And that's one of the biggest drawbacks I see or biggest mistakes that a lot of guys make, right? Is, oh, I've injured my knee. I guess I can't go to the gym. Well, what? How, 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 how does that mean that you definitely can't go to the gym? There's so much stuff that you can still do. Like if you've got, if you've, for, so let's go for it all. So for example, if you've hurt your shoulder, you can still leg press. You can still, um, you know, do a lot of things with your legs. You can do extensions. You can do any isolation movements that you can get through the legs on machines. You can potentially, you can, if your shoulder's that bad, you can, I mean, not that bad, you can still hold weights and do lunges. You can do body weight stuff. Um, and then even upper body wise, just because your shoulder's hurt doesn't mean you, you might not be able to do, you know, horizontal or vertical pulling or maybe horizontal or vertical pressing. You can do one of those movements. You can isolate yep. the arms. You can isolate the the um, back or the lats, particularly by using straight arm pull downs that might not aggravate the shoulder as much. You, there, there's so much stuff that you can still do. You can do partial range of motion training. You can do, and, and that can apply to if you've got a lower body injury as well. It's uh, one of the key things I see when people have knee injuries is, well, yeah, I can't squat all the way down to, you know, past 90 degrees, but can you do a controlled squat box squat you know where you're only down 30 degrees well why not do that as you know with as much quality as you can to keep the keep the muscles working in your lower body keep keep that squatting pattern ingrained and also keep as much of the muscle as you can and strength yeah definitely um it's when i had my uh shoulder injury so i've got basically both my AC joints now um, need reconstruction and I still haven't done it because I've managed to recover and train around it. Yeah. Um, I pretty much went back into the gym and found out what things I could do without it hurting and if I could do it without it hurting, I did it. It, yeah. it was as simple as that. Like, um, So when I did my right AC joint, 
I could still press overhead, but I couldn't bench press. Um, and I could still do all the rowing variations. I just couldn't do upright rows. So I just kept training. I like with both of them, I squatted the whole way through it. In fact, I made some of my best gains on my squat while I was recovering from my AC joint injury because I just could squat all the time and I couldn't do other things that I would normally do in that session. So I just squatted more. Yeah. And, and did you use a safety squat bar for that? Because I was this was going to be my last little point I was going to touch on. Um, I didn't, but I probably would if I had access to it. I didn't yeah. have access at the time. Oh, okay. I just uh, adjusted my grip, um, and it was high bar anyway, so there's not, not that much pressure on the shoulders. Yeah. Um, so the last point I'll talk about training around or injury is um, the – getting out of your comfort zone, trying things that you haven't tried before. Like look at a lot of different special equipment that is out there that does have its use for sure when you're injured. Yeah, if you're um, in a situation where you've got access to like cable machines, pin machines, anything where the range of movement is controlled and like the angle your joint is moving through is controlled, you'll be able to find a variation through those machines that is suitable for to work around your injury and it's just a matter of finding that one and you know so maybe you won't be able to you know do overhand grip bicep curls but you can do underhand grip or, or whatever yep um extrapolate that to wherever you want um but you're still doing something and that's going to be better than nothing absolutely that i mean and and that way we're in much better position once we are you know getting towards the final stages of our injury that um that the final stages actually came a lot faster than we'd predicted. And what this allows us to do, if you play it smart, is to give yourself a lot more of a controlled return to play. Now, what I mean by that is you don't just go, oh, I feel like it's been two months now, or, oh, this is how long the doctor said, or, oh, I feel better, my injury seems to have gone, and you go straight back into a rugby game. That's yep. asking to get re-injured. Instead, what you want to do is... Uh, control the environment as best you can so what do i mean by that um you re you're essentially it's like how you get onto an on-ramp to get onto a highway you wouldn't just go from a you wouldn't just start your car up in the middle of a highway you'd be fucked instead there's a reason that there's on ramps is so it allows you to gain the speed so that you can match the speed of everyone else and then you enter the highway it's the same thing coming back from an injury right so you want to get used to being back into the gym get used to back to training um, in the gym first then once you've done that get used to running get used to running and changing direction get used to running at a higher speed get used to running with a ball and a distraction because you know you now when when you're playing touch rugby you're no longer concentrating on your running you're just concentrating on the game itself and then you gradually slowly move into contact but controlled contact and then into games but a controlled game ideally before you can actually get into a full game and be confident that you are fully fit from your injury yeah definitely um Boom. i think that comes down to just changing your focus um once you get an injury your focus should no longer be on probably specifically aesthetic goals for that body part like if you hurt your knee you're going to lose some muscle mass in your quad and probably in your hamstring as well so rather than looking at that it's looking at what your rehab process is like and exactly what you just said working your way through those steps and working with a, a physio or some sort of recovery or fitness professional and trying like i said change your focus from i want to have big quads or i want to be fast or whatever to i want to recover sooner um and that's like that mindset is a massive um leap forward for your recovery yeah absolutely and actually to, to finish this this is actually what i say to when my if i have if i have any of my athletes that get sick i mean injured injured as well but more often than not i say this when that's when they're sick is if you get sick your your first and primary objective should be to um no longer get sick or no longer be sick to get back healthy because then yep. you can look to start improving if you're constantly trying to fight off this illness then you know rather than waste a one week where you're trying to get better you've ended up wasting a month because you haven't accepted the fact that you are sick and you've kept trying to carry on with your goals the same way same thing for being injured you don't want to extend okay. the length of that injury because that's only going to extend the length where your hamstrung 
uh, in your ability to improve. Boom. Mic exactly. drop. I would, uh, um, the well, only thing I would add to, to everything we've gone over so far would so be... So we'll pick that mic back up. Sorry, you good? No, no, we're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the only thing I'd add to what we've said so far is stay positive. Um, yeah. I know, I know it sounds really cliche, um, but it is something that's massive for recovery is staying positive and staying goal focused and just getting that mindset um, in, in, a, in a forward moving direction. Did like, you just no headbutt your uh, microphone? So are we good? Yeah, we're good. It, it, yeah. It, you just boomed it. I don't know, it felt oh, like, did I? yeah, you must have knocked it with, you, with that beard of yours, I swear. Yeah, it's I, all good. I probably just moved the other way. Um, so, yeah, you just need to get uh, that positive mindset and that's going to do half the work for you. Like, doing rehab sucks. Like, let's be honest, nobody likes doing those rehab exercises. But if you have a positive mindset and, you know, you look for the positive stuff and all that, it makes it so much easier and it means that you'll return to play sooner. And also, once you've started that rehab procedure, just because you're back on the field doesn't mean your rehab stops. Um, yeah. To minimize future risk of the same injury, you need to be rehabbing that still after you're back to playing, after you're back to full um, contact, after you're back in the gym doing everything normally, you have to continue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and to piggyback off of that, um, off of that positivity standpoint, when I was at um, Northampton Saints, probably one of the only things I, that's really been ingrained at me from when I was there was that standpoint of they used they used to always use the the phrase injury is opportunity so if you had an arm injury they would use that to you know get your leg strength up as best as you can or if you had a knee injury you know they'd say right we're going to use this time whilst you're not you know on the field anymore to completely prehab your shoulders and to build a you know rock solid upper body or to build your aerobic fitness as best we can you know you, there's exactly. always other opportunities to be taken from an injury in an ideal world. We never get them, but if you do get them, then use them as an opportunity to work on some weaknesses and like really get back to the, uh, the field as best player as you can possibly be or yeah, back definitely. to the gym in as best shape as you can, you know, use those opportunities. Um, but if you can prevent them from ever happening in the first place, then you're in the best stead. So, uh, Kellen Von Moga, the guy who played Arnie in the film that either just came out or is about to come out, um, who was absolutely mahusive in the film, um, ended up getting injured a number of times, either on set or training for the set, and then uh, they had to keep pushing production. And because, obviously, he had a schedule to meet, and he was probably getting paid a buttload of money for this film, um, he kept coming back probably before he was ready. Right, wait, well, yeah, gone. I got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Have I lost you again? No, no, you got me. Oh, I just interrupted you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, like, so you're saying he has the same experience that a lot of rugby players in season might have with that pressure of having to keep playing and whatnot. Exactly. Um, and even now, he's half the man he used to be. He, like, he still looks great and everything, but um, he's just going surgery to surgery because he keeps coming back too soon. And it's something I see happen all the time on the rugby pitch. Right. Um, and yeah, now he's never going to get better. Sorry. I keep Exactly. That. They're just coming back before <laughs> um, they're advised to. And I've seen people advised by the physio not to play. And then for whatever reason, whether it be club pressures or whatever, um, they do play. And they get injured almost guaranteed every time. Yeah. And, and this um, is not the same. Like taking time off of rugby because you're always getting so beaten up is not the same as people who try and take a year away from rugby to become a better, like just to work on strength and condition. That's not like when, when guys take sabbaticals, it's not just so they can work on their fitness. It's so they can get away from getting the shit beaten out of them every single week. Exactly. Cool. All right. Don't get injured people. And we'll see you in the next podcast. All right, guys, thank you very much for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode or if you've enjoyed any episode of the Robbie Muscle Podcast, please go ahead and give us a five-star rating and type a quick review. It takes about a minute and it really helps us out a ton, helps grow the show, helps grow Rugby Muscle. And in turn, we will be able to give you guys the best quality content, information and programs that we possibly can. 
If you're interested in any of that stuff, like the free physique nutrition video series or the TJ Strength Supplement Guide or the 50 free rugby conditioning sessions, you can find them all at rugby-muscle.com or by going through my Instagram profile at tj.strength. Give me a quick follow. And until next time, guys, I've been your host as always, TJ. See you soon.